get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. Sunny Donnelly, IFL TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. I'm at Punch London in Mill Hill today and with me I've got trainer of the champs, Mr Don Charles. Don, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, as usual. How are you, young man? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, I see a few of the boys down here today. Uh, Jordan Joseph, I believe, uh, Frank Bullioni, Del Chisora, obviously, and uh, is it Nick? Nick Papa. Nick Papa, I didn't want to get the name wrong. Um, nice little stable you collected down here? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, you know, they're all good guys, you know, um, with a lot of ambitions, like myself. Um, obviously, Del Boy had a little bit of a break from you, he's come back, uh, and I've been told by Spencer Oliver a minute ago that he's new and improved man. Well, you know, Sometimes in life you have to take a couple of steps back to take 10 steps forward steps, you know, and that's what's happened with where Derek's concerned. Um, it was, it's done us both good to have had the time apart, because as you know, I started my coaching career with him mm -hmm. 13 years ago, and he started with me. And, um, you know, familiarity sometimes uh, breeds content. So him going away, to investigate, to see what, what else there is out there. Obviously, uh, I missed him as a fighter because he was my first fighter that um, all the experience that I'd, I've gotten from boxing is through working with, with Derek Chisora. And the name I've acquired from boxing is through working with Derek Chisora. So, you know, I did miss him a lot um, as a fighter, as, as a person as well. And um, yeah, he came back and we reunited and that hunger that first got him all the successes. From my observation, he's got that hunger back, and that's the key. It's like a love story. I love it. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> Very romantic. <laughs> yeah. um, Frank Bullioni, a great fighter, well known on the circuit, obviously. Um, big, big fight coming up against Jose Burton. He's, he, he's put, been put down as the underdog. He believes that Naturally. he's not. Uh, how has he been in training? Yeah, listen, you know, um, regardless whether he was made the favourite or the underdog, the overdog, side dog, hound dog, you know, it doesn't matter to us, you know, we've, we've trained, we've, we've trained, uh, Frank is, um, you know, all through the time I've been doing this uh, uh, boxing training as a coach, have I come across anyone like him? No, I haven't. Um, I haven't had, I'm not moaning here, just through experiences in the sense that I haven't had the privilege of inheriting a ready-made fighter. When he came to me, he was a ready-made fighter. Me getting involved, obviously, um, if I were a designer, you look at the, 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 the product, in this case we're talking about human beings, you look at the fighter, where can I improve? If it's not broken down, mend it. There are certain elements he brought that I haven't changed. There's lots of elements that I could see room for improvement with what we've been working on. And we've been together now for almost 10 months and uh, trust me, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a different guy that the guy that walked through his doors. He has said that to me, he said he feels completely different in himself, he had a, like a long hard camp obviously, pulling out the first fight with a cut, he said mm -hmm. maybe it worked in his favour because he obviously had more time to well, improve. It was, it's one of those things that was not planned, had we gone on the 24th of September I believe the previous date, we would have still, I still be saying the same thing to you, he would still have, would have been victorious, but you know, uh, we've had a, a, a couple of months uh, because of the postponement of the, of during, uh, due to the cut, and um, that's allowed us, the team, to have uh, longer together to to, um, to familiarise each other, and to, to each other, or with each other. Obviously, you've got a few of the, the lesser-known boys that are making their name in the in the pro game, uh, fighting on Saturday, I believe, at York Hall on the Goodwin Show. Talk to me about them. Well, starting with the youngest one is Jordan Joseph. Jordan Joseph is a uh, uh, he had a very, very limited amateur uh, uh, experience. He had six amateur fights, and which is not really recommended to turn professional after only six amateur fights. And I believe he, he lost three of those. And um, he turned pro. His father used to train me, so that's why I got involved. 
he asked me can I help him with his son and I've known Jordan since he was like five six years old and I've watched him grow up I couldn't really out of respect also of knowing the family I took it upon myself yeah. he's like a son to me so I've um, nurtured him and he's on beating he's fighting for his first professional title on Saturday on the, ten on the third and um, He's, he's really considering, like I said, he's only got a very limited amateur experience. He's going to he's going to do very well as a professional boxer. Obviously, some boxers suit the pro game more than the amateur game, so you yeah. can't look too much into it anyway. Yeah. yeah, this is a typical example of it. His style has always been that of a pro boxer because he grew up watching uh, in a pro gym. So, uh, consequently, his style uh, uh, was uh, automatically of that of a pro boxer. Uh, which didn't work for him in the, um, as an amateur, but it's serving him very well right now. And uh, secondly, I've got Nick Parper, who's a cruiserweight. Um, again, he's uh, 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 he was he had a, a better, a longer amateur uh, experience than Jordan Joseph, and um, he's doing remarkably well. He's been out for a year, mind you. Nick Parper, he sustained an injury which kept him uh, out of the sport for one year. He's back and he's hungry, starving for success. And uh, believe me, you're going to be seeing big things from that kid in the future because he is good. He's special. He's he's got the X factor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see that on Box Check on Saturday. I believe he's fighting a, a guy that's making his debut. Yeah, I think you know. Listen, I'm not a promoter. I'm not a matchmaker. Uh, they've told her we don't actually know too much about this fella, especially when someone yeah. hasn't got a record. Listen, you've got to be more wary of them. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, we don't know this guy. He knows us, but we don't know yeah. him. So that's, you know, but we've made provisions for any eventuality. Of course. Um, elsewhere on the show, obviously, the, the big a, a, attraction, the reason it's box office on the, the next Saturday with Bullioni mm -hmm. is because of Anthony Joshua. Um, Absolutely, yeah. What do you make of the whole hype around Anthony Joshua? It's not a hype, it's real. It's real. Yeah, it's real. Um, the real deal. It's real, and he's always been real in my eyes, you know, from day one. And um, real boxers can still have a hype, though. I must say that. I didn't mean, mean, real boxers can still have a hype. There is a, a big. But the hype comes with it. Yeah. Because there is a hype. This is show business. You know, it, it is. There's an element of show business about the whole industry. You have to. Uh, uh, it's a part of a, a big uh, part of the entertainment industry. So there has to be a hype around it, or else you can't sell it. That so there is an element of hype, but in, in some cases uh, they're real. Uh, in most cases, should I say, in the case of Anthony Joshua, he's real. Obviously, I know every 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 night work as a trainer, every day's work as a trainer is is important, and it's a building process. But on Saturday, the tenth of December, two thousand sixteen, at the Manchester Arena, it could potentially be the biggest and most successful night of your career um, as a trainer. With if you get the wins with Del Boy and yeah, it depends on how you look at it. I'm, I'm a very humble man in the sense that, you know, I haven't gotten to the end of my uh, uh, career as a coach, I hope not. Um, we're going to win by the grace of God, we're going to victorious, both my fighters are going to victorious on that night. Um, whatever happens, I'm already, cont I'm already satisfied with what, what I've achieved. I'm still aspiring to achieve more as a coach. Yeah, so I don't think if you label it as one... Yeah, it's, it's a very important night for me as a coach. Yes, it is. But I wouldn't say it's the be and end of, of... No, no, but I'm saying one of the most successful... Well, yeah, you could one yeah. of. If I didn't one get of. that, if it's one of, yeah, I'll take that. I'm sure you would. But obviously, um, I know you've got Nick Parper coming in soon. I'm going to try and catch up with him so we can hear... Yes, and I, before I Go forget... Um, don't forget. There's one of... It would be very unfair of me to... Uh, not to mention, there's a heavyweight also fighting on the third on that Steve Goodwin show. Okay. Okay. Young David. David Abrahams. Dave Abraham. Big, big Dave Abraham. Big Dave Abraham. Big He's Dave on Abraham. that show. He's another uh, heavyweight. Have you got him as well? Basically, he works out of this gym. A, a chap called... A young trainer coming through is called Tony Peel. Yeah. Okay. Very well known. Uh, young man who he works under my guidance and with David Abraham. I have an input with David Abraham to development, yeah, to develop yeah. him. And he's one for the future, you know, he's a big lad. And you know, if when schooled properly, um, he in the heavyweight division, listen, it's big dudes that just a couple of punches, all right, and mate, well. So, so he's on that bill on the third, all right. Well, I'll be there on Saturday anyway, so I'm sure I'll catch up with you all then. But until then, uh, Don. If I don't see you, best of luck on the third Thank and the 10th. Uh, God be with you, and I'll catch up with you soon. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I have felt. <laughs> <laughs>